Hey everybody, before we get started, I just want to remind you this was brought to you by our patrons like I Got Comics, Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kylie Den, and Nestor Flores. If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies, and it really help us out. Thanks for your support, everybody. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is time once again to talk about Star Wars Legion by Fantasy Flight Games. Yes, I know. Like you, I am still excited about Clone Wars, but we're not there yet. It's only just been announced. There's nothing new. But uh, what has been made new is the official Occupier preview, uh, which is good because this and the Land Speeder were available for early purchase at Adepticon, so uh, they're already out on the internet. I think there was a post on the forums about somebody trying to eBay the frickin' Land Speeder already. Scalpers! Anyway, so uh, we're fully spoiled. They put an article. It's a new month. Hopefully they don't take fucking forever to post the land speeder because that'll be, that video that I make on that will be grossly out of date by then. But I'm still going to make it. Anyway, just because it's an easy way to work in my publishing schedule, you know? And it gives me higher quality assets than uh, other people's, you know, goofy scans. But yeah, to to emphasize, I'm doing a, art, a video about the preview. Uh, Fifth Trooper today... Uh, the day I'm recording this anyway, posted an official unboxing because they were there at Adepticon, obviously, for stuff. Go and check out those streams. They're really cool. Had Alex Davies on for a little bit. You can learn some stuff. Anyway, um, but yeah, so they had those in hand and unboxed them, so that's how redundant this video already is. But uh, anyway, we're going to jump on into the Occupier, I guess, and uh, keep it going. So first, let's talk about the unit itself. The... TX-225 GAV-W Occupier Combat Assault Tank. I can't even fit the whole thing in my fucking title slot. Uh, it's, it's, it's a long boy. So this is a heavy unit. It's got, it's one per mini, or uh, one mini per card. Duh. It's gonna cost you about 155 points, so a little bit cheaper than the ATST, but not cheap by any means. On the other hand, I mean, it's Imperial, so it's cheaper than a Palpatine. Just saying. Uh, and for all that, you get eight wounds, six resilience, and a red defense die. Yep, a vehicle with a straight-up red defense die. It has the keywords, armor, arsenal two, reposition, transport one open, weak point one sides. It has no surge and a speed one. So, uh, keyword-wise, armor's pretty standard. You know, immunity to normal hits, you need natural crits or impact. Arsenal two, it can fire up to two of its guns. That's pretty good, because it comes with two guns and also has a hard point for a pintle mount. Uh, the transport is new. We've had a lot of talk about those rules. So basically, you can transport a friendly trooper unit. Yeah, after defending, if you suffered one more wounds, the unit you're transporting suffers one wound. They can't shoot out of it or anything, and there's lots of other stuff that's in the RNG. And you are, all should be familiar with weak point from the ATST, but there's his sides. And because this is an elongated base, there's quite a lot of sides angles to come at. Uh, which is why I think that the... Uh, 225 is not necessarily, like, super broken or anything, even though it's got red defense dice. It's just, you know, you, they got a free impact in those sides. And for upgrades, you've got a pilot, a hard point, and a comms. Pretty standard setup for a heavy vehicle. So for its default weapons, because we'll talk about the hard points later, you've got the forward twin Mark II EW cannons, which is range 1 to 2 and is just a red and a black. It's suppressive and fixed front. And then you have the lateral quad cannons, which are uh, range 1 to 4, impact 2, fixed front, and they're 2 red, 2 black. So, a uh, pretty typical setup here. You've got an anti-infantry weapon and an anti-armor weapon, but the infantry weapon is close up. And I say it's infantry because it's got suppressive on it. Vehicles don't care about suppressive, uh, but apparently all forms of infantry do, so that's a pretty good deal. You just have to get in a little close. Uh, but obviously... If you don't have any other reason, I mean, if you've got them in your guns, you're going to throw also the lateral lateral guns, so that's three red, three black. Pretty nasty dice. Those reds are pretty accurate, even without surge. And uh, you got some options for fixing that. We'll throw those in later. But that's a pretty decent attack that's made up for the fact that it's up close. Uh, and obviously, there's no sharpshooter or anything on this, or pierce, so it's mostly going to force units to keep their head down. It's not necessarily going to kill them. But uh, two red, two black with impact two, you know, those two red dice are pretty likely to roll those hits. That, I think, is a fair play to, like, fight other armor. <clears throat> so that should be really handy. Um, also, it's important to note, you know, a lot of people forgot this when it was in small. I think I don't know. I don't know how much of a big deal I've made it at the time. But it does have reposition, so 
either before or after you perform a standard move, you can perform a free pivot. So they don't have speeder, but and they're slow still. They're only speed one, like we said. But they do still have a little bit of action economy. Um, so you can actually, if you're going to move and you're going to be like, okay, I want to scooch over there, I can, you know, turn it a little. Or if you did a standard move and you're like, oh, shoot, I didn't quite dial in my front arc. Let me scooch slightly so I'm pointing all my guns at you. Uh, I think for the slightly lower price point, they're pretty decently balanced that uh, they'll actually be useful. The transport's kind of a bonus feature, I think, not the primary thing, but definitely something you can do if you want to extract a unit or um, push up with a unit. Now, note you, I don't think you can uh, pick up units that have objective tokens. Sorry about that, I got a little. Other than that, yeah, there's not really much to talk about. It's just uh, generally a really good vehicle with the, the, you know, the wound state, the resilience, you know, uh, if... I gotta be honest. I think resilience is kind of a it's kind of a bum deal because it's like two points less than the than the the wounds. Like, yeah, sure, you can get a mobility kill on this thing or damage one of its weapons or whatever. But like, seriously, then you only need to do two more points, and it's got weak points in those big fat sides. That shouldn't be too hard to try for. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and talk about those hard points because I don't think there's I think anything else about the baseline unit has been talked to death. So, let's talk about those hard points. Uh, I don't think they really do anything to change the unit. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's a little scratchy. For some reason, like, the moment I start doing a video, my fo my voice gets, like, super scratchy. I should probably do, like, a fake take of the entire video to get my voice lubed up or something. Anyway, uh, if you haven't seen these in, like, a number common spoiler or whatever, you know, they're here. So, uh, like I said, I don't think they really do anything redefining about the unit, but... Uh, I do think they are pretty essential because otherwise all of your attacks are fixed front. So even with that uh, pivot, you know, you've got a long base. It can be a little hard to fish a guy out of your sides or rear if they're, you know, getting in there. And you can't always count to back up on a guy. So we've got two. They're both pretty cheap. <coughs> First, you have the DLT-19 Rifle Pintle, uh, which is range 1 to 4, 2 red, and impact 1 for 18 points. Pretty typical for a DLT-19. Uh, a little expensive, but hey, I mean, it's got arsenal, so you never know when you'll get a chance to... Because it's got the same range as your main gun, so um, I think if you're planning on using your uh, TX-225 to take out enemy armor, the 19's a good, you know, upsell for 18, you know, for four extra points compared to the other one, which we're going to talk about in a second. Because it's got that extra impact, so you go up to impact three, you'll have four... Re Four reds, two blacks. You'll probably have either an aim token or uh, a surge conversion, because we'll talk about that in a second. That's a whole separate slide. But it can be a pretty decent opportunity to like get some of that scratch damage in and, and you know bump yourself up to impact three. Um, it can definitely be a more economic use because you're already you're already quote unquote paying for arsenal too, so you may as well be able to actually use your range. Plus, you can use it to fish guys off your sides, like we said. Um, the other one that I think will be more common, especially combined with the um, possibility of tokens or whatever, is the RT-97C Rifle Pintel, which is range 1 to 4. That's red and 3 white dice. No keywords. 14 points. So for 4 points cheaper, you get less accuracy, but technically twice as much max damage. Uh, you will almost assuredly want to run this with... Okay, so I'll say this. With the 2 red dice, you can run the DLT-19 Rifle Pintel the DLT-19 Pintel, I should say, without a pilot. <clears throat> the RT-97C, no way. With those three white dice, like, that's... That's kind of, you know, especially for an Imperial faction, that's that's playing with numbers you don't necessarily want to play with, all right? So with your surge conversion, you've kind of massaged that, and, you know, Imperial players are used to rolling whites with, with offensive surge. Um, or you can smack that with uh, the aim token pilot to give you the opportunity to re-roll a couple of those, maybe. Whatever floats your boat in terms of dice mods. Um, <clears throat> for infantry, I do think that the 97C is pretty good with either of those options. Because, you know, you actually have a chance of doing some damage, some, some serious damage to a unit. In fact, if you uh, roll all paint, you know, you can take out an enemy unit, assuming they blank out. 
Uh, so you've got a, a, a decent damage potential there. Uh, and depending on your range, you could still throw this at an enemy at range 4 with your main gun if they're in the front. So that makes it pretty nasty because that gives you uh, a few extra dice to play with, you know. It, it doubles your total number of max hits possible, though like I said, a lot of those are less accurate. So for 14 points, it's really good. I've heard some people complain that the, the lane speeder options are all more expensive, but I think that they're, they're evened out a little by what they do, uh, and we'll talk about that whenever we get to a actual article on that. Um, so yeah, basically, yeah, depending on what you want your TX-225 to do, you can pick which of the pintle mounts to put in. Um, you should always put in at least one because, like I said, they're not arc-locked. They're not fixed weapons, uh, which is really handy. Listen, let me tell you some lessons on no from the RPG, which also uses the term fixed a lot. Or uh, at least, you know, firing arc-locked. So, uh, yeah. No. Uh, turreted weapons are really great. So, consider at least one of them. And like I said, uh, if you're scrimping on the, the extra pilot, the DLT's worth it just because those two dice are super accurate. And like I said, especially if you're going for just fighting enemy armor, extra impact's great. If you're planning on using this thing to, like, protect your infantry against other infantry or, like, hose down enemy infantry so they can't attack objectives or something, you know, the RT-97C has that one red die for highly accurate. You'll probably want to stick it with the with the surge conversion, which means you've got, like, one blank face on that die. And then anyth anything else is just extra. So let's talk about those pilots we alluded to. So, this pack comes with two pilot upgrades. Well, technically it comes with three, because, uh, as was revealed by unboxing and stuff, there are two copies of the generic pilot in there. So, hey, that's pretty fun that uh, they give you that so you can double up. You know, it's not really useful at the moment, but it's, it's, it's neat that they give you extras of the generics. So, we got two pilot upgrades. First, for five points, you have the unique First Sergeant Arb Mab. Uh, Imperial only ground vehicle only, so compliant with the ATST for the moment. Uh, you gain Tactical 1. After you perform a standard move, gain one aim token. Pretty decent. Uh, you know, this is something that I think both ATSTs and uh, Occupiers will get a little bit get a bit, a little bit of action out of. You're going to be standard moving a lot, uh, especially because the Occupier is speed 1, so you're going to scooch forward. And then take your free repositions. And then you can get an aim token out of it if you want to shoot after that. So that's a it's a pretty decent option to give you a little bit of reroll. Like I said, if you've got the... RT-97C, uh, Pintle, with those white dice, you know, you can really gamble with those if you want. Or just in general, it's it's security. But uh, I think that the second one, the generic, is actually a little bit of a better buy, which is probably why it costs five more points. So for ten points, you can get the Imperial Hammer's Elite Armor Pilot, uh, who uh, means you gain a surge to hit. It's, it's that simple. So for ten points, you can get a surge conversion. Uh, that's great. That's amazing. That's excellent. No, really, it's great. It's it's phenomenal. Uh, because, well, I mean, <clears throat> the offensive adjustment is something that I think lots of vehicles needed. So now they can take it to uh, give, like, if you're an ATST or a, or a TX-225. So that's really handy, uh, especially with the red dice. You know, every, everybody on the Imperial side knows all about rolling red dice with Surge. You know, you've even got another DLT in this pack. That goddamn DLT. But for 10 points, that's, that's a, you know, bargain. That takes you to 165. That's still a nice middling unit. You've got much more reliable offense. Your black dice are going to hit a little bit better. Your red dice are almost infallible. You know, the, the odds of you blanking out on a red are incredibly unlikely. Now, I mean, if you're rolling a lot of red dice, if I remember my probability correctly, that means that technically your your rate of possible individual occurrence will go up just because you're rolling more dice. But in general, the individual dice, it's its very unlikely that you're going to roll blanks. So you can feel pretty secure. Uh, you could already feel pretty secure with the red dice, but this is, like, the best your dice can get. And uh, unfortunately, I think the thing that makes them better than First Sergeant Arb Mab is, uh, as far as I know, this thing doesn't have any way to get precise, so your aim token's only re-rolling two dice... And you throw a lot of dice. Um, it's it would it would be much more comfortable if you could just count on a decent number of hits ahead of time. Uh, so you don't have to do this with like I said the DLT anti armor combo, um, but if you have the room, definitely take it. 
Uh, like I said, if you're doing this against infantry, this is one of these is required almost. I think just because you want to shore up your dice types, and you want the maximum number of hits you can get before cover because you still don't have any sharpshooter or pierce or anything. No blast. Um, you'll have a decent chance of making enemies keep their head down that way, uh, especially God help them if they actually get in your suppressive range. Uh, there's no. There's no minimum minimum range for uh, the the occupier. Like all of its weapons are range one to four or one to two at least. That's I. The important point I'm trying to say is they're all minimum range one. Sorry, I should have phrased that a little bit better. So like, if you get them in range for your forward suppressive guns, that's good. But that means you're also because you're arsenal two. You're definitely throwing in like a pintle or a main you know quad gun shot in there also. So I think these are really good for the occupier, and they'll probably really help out the ATST too, because a lot of people are like, "Oh, the ATST is perfectly fine." Uh, well, now you're even more fine. You get free aim tokens, or you get a uh, surge to hit. I think surge to hit will be more successful, even though it's more expensive, just because technically tactical as a keyword still requires you to take that standard move. So if you want to like fort up somewhere, uh, if your strategy is to like camp an ATST or an occupier on an objective and be like. No enemies, you may not approach my objective. Um, or uh, have them kind of like, if you're doing, for instance, like breakthrough, have them like hang back to defend your zone. Uh, especially because the, the occupier is kind of slow. So you, you might want to have them like hang back, take some long range pot shots to kind of like thin the enemy so they can't score. Um, because they're only one unit anyway. So th they're both super good. And that's uh, basically it for the Occupier. Uh, we, thanks to unboxing and spoilers and stuff, we know that the other card in the pack is uh, HQ Uplink, which is a pretty good choice for them, I think. I mean, you know, long-range comms is also good, depending on what you're doing, but an HQ Uplink just to be like, yeah, I can give you an order when I need it. That's pretty fun. Though, uh, you know, if you're going to send this crashing into your enemy's lines, comms chamber is also always fun. Uh, we also know that there's something called a link targeting array that's a comms upgrade that's coming with Clone Wars stuff, so God knows that might be useful. <laughs> but that's uh, that's a long way off. Anyway, that's the occupier, and remember it comes with two copies of uh, Imperial Hammers. Hammer Pilot. So uh, other than that, I guess we're just, it's, listen, you never know with Legion. Um, we're probably expecting either a land speeder preview next week, or maybe at the end of this week there'll be an announcement for the Imperial side of Wave 4, they're calling it. Yeah, so I didn't realize that um, apparently, even though they don't release it in Waves, the developers still develop it in Waves, or at least that's how they think of it. Uh, I learned this from Alex Davies giving that interview with uh, Fifth Trooper. Like I said, you can check out their streams on their YouTube channel. Uh, so I, th I think the way, or is it Wave 5? So I think, like, Jin, Krennic their troops, and even these guys, the new heavies, are Wave 4, and then Rebel Veterans and Tauntauns is quote-unquote Wave 5. Um, so we'll see what the Imperial equivalent to that is. Uh, they did basically spoil that, um, because he mentioned that it's not, uh, that fire support, the keyword that appears on clones, is not a new keyword, technically. So um, even though they haven't explicitly revealed that, that basically means that the um, the detachment trooper, the, the medium blaster, will have fire support. Which is cool, in case you forgot, fire support is uh, if you have a face of order token and an enemy, uh, or not an enemy, a friendly in certain range performs a ranged attack, you can add your dice to it. So that's pretty cool. That'll uh, that'll help, I think, some of those units stay more entrenched if you're using that detachment. And we'll have to see what other rules there are for that. So uh, that preview is probably not coming for a while, though, because they're way down at the bottom of the totem pole as far as releases go. So, like I said, look forward to the next video, either being the full land speeder preview or um, some kind of Imperial announcement that people are super excited for. Other than that, if you got anything else to talk about, I'll keep you apprised of all Legion news, you know. And uh, lots of other stuff coming out. Super excited about Clone Wars stuff, finally. Uh, but also still interested to know what they're doing for other factions, you know. Just game design stuff in general excites me. And I hope it excites you. So I'll see you soon. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. If you have any comments about the unit, leave them in the comment section down below. Like, what are you going to do with your occupier? You can also join our Discord. That link is in the description. And, of course, if you're new and have not already, please subscribe to the channel so you can always get our latest videos. And consider hitting that bell for notifications so you always know when we post a new video. 
because maybe sometimes YouTube doesn't tell you if we posted a new video. I don't know. And like it says at the front of the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to this episode early, other stuff and shenanigans. And uh, it's generally a good time for us and hopefully for you. Well, uh, that about wraps up this video. Thanks for your time as always, everybody. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of a, a pithy remark about rolling armor. Uh, I don't got it. I don't know. Just, in, you know, rolling thunder or something. <laughs>